Hi, this is Mr. New, and welcome to Illustrator CS5 for East Career and Tech Academy. In this episode, we are going to explore more of the drawing tools. So let's go ahead and get started. I already have a document ready to go. Once again, it's print format. Click OK. And we have our artboards ready to go. Do a Command-0, and that's going to pull that artboard up. I'm not as worried about exactness and using rulers and guides in this episode, so we won't be pulling those up but I do want you to be mindful of how much of the space we're going to be using because you are going to be needing to use a lot of tools in a very small area in this one artboard. So what I would suggest, shift command and highlight maybe the first upper one sixth of the page and let go. We're going to start our drawing right up in this area. Let's go ahead and grab the paintbrush tool. Paintbrush tool is on the left hand side just below your rectangular tool. I'm going to start by just showing you a nice basic curved line. Now, nice and smooth lines with the paintbrush. A couple of things you need to know. If I go ahead and click back on the selection tool and select that, if I was to add a fill, the fill basically goes from anchor point to anchor point. This may or may not be what you're looking for. So just understand the fill on a paintbrush tool could be a little odd. So in this case, we're not going to use the fill, but I just want you to be able to see that. Let's undo. And what I do want to do is kind of show you a few things that we can do with that paintbrush. If I grab the paintbrush again, create another curve going in this direction, it kind of looks a little bit like a leaf, but the problem with this is, once again, if I go to selection, these are two separate items. If we wanted to create a leaf, this is going to be real difficult to turn this into that. If I select both items and I decide to fill that in with a green color because this is going to be a leaf, we have something that looks very, very odd. The way we're going to fix this, if I take the direct select tool, I'll zoom in on the top tip here, and using my direct select, I'm going to highlight just those two anchor points. If I go to object, path, and average, we did this last class, and both, they will come together. If I go object, path and join, it now becomes one object. As I zoom back out, you're going to notice that that color is filled in. We still have a little bit of an odd thing happening here at the bottom. Let's zoom in on that. And with the direct select tool as well, all I want to do is connect this here because if this is a leaf, this is part of the leaf stem. So I can click on that, drag it down, let go. And now when I zoom back out again, the leaf actually looks more like a leaf. It's a little bit big for my stem here, so I'm going to go ahead and use my bounding box and shrink that down some. In fact, let me make it a little skinnier too. There we go. That looks like it might be a good leaf. Next thing I want to show you is how to use gradient, because I would like to have a gradient look to this leaf. So if I grab my gradient palette and then I click on linear gradient, right now as we see our leaf, let me pull this closer over so we can kind of see it as I work. We have this gradient. It's right now it's black and white. If I double click on the color below, I can choose a color. I'll go with a darker green. If I double click on the white, I can choose a color here as well. I'll go with a lighter green. This slider on the top, the diamond, will let me adjust how much green or light green is going to be in that gradient. If I drag these boxes toward the middle, it will sharpen the edge of where that occurs. In order to get my gradient to cut that leaf directly in half from point to point, I'm going to make this a lot sharper to use as a guide. Then I'm going to go to my angle tool here so I can adjust the angle. I went the wrong way. Let's go this direction. And we're going to find an angle that looks like it should work. This is pretty close. Let's pull this triangle over and see if we can't... Yeah, that's real close. In fact, if I type in 20, I bet that would do it. Yep, 20 was just about right. So now if I go ahead and bring those back out to get a much more softer edge to my gradient. Okay, so I have my leaf right about where I want it right there. I'll go ahead and drag it over to my stem. Let's angle it a little bit, angle a little bit more, and I'm going to go ahead and attach that right onto the stem. If I do a command C, command V to paste, I can add more leaves. And I can always use my arrows to bring it in closer. I can select both of those, copy and paste. And now if I click on them separately, I can bring those in. And now if I click on all four, 
copy and paste. And this time I'm going to go to Object, Transform, Reflect, and I'm going to reflect on a vertical axis. I now have these leaves that I can now bring up and drop onto the other side. So, once again, I have a very quick way that I could add leaves and branches to an object by using those tools. If I go ahead and click on brush again, I'm going to slide over to the side here a bit. I'm going to open up my brush palette. And at the bottom of the brush palette, I want to show that we have a brush library menu. Now, I know a lot of you have already played with the brushes that show up in the brush palette. But if you click on the brush library menu, you have all of these other categories of brushes you can use. Let's take a look at some of the arrows. There's a number of arrow patterns in three different categories. And with arrows, I can actually pick and choose an arrow. And if I just paint and draw a line, I can create an arrow with just a single stroke. I can actually curve the arrow. And if I wanted a pointing hand, I can grab that pointy hand and bring that around and point at things. I also have a number of brushes. Let's go to artistic. We have a number of different artistic brushes. Uh, let's take a look at watercolors, but I want you to actually play around with all of these. And with the watercolor, let's choose a color to paint with. Let's go with red. And if I choose a watercolor palette, let's go with this one right here. And I do a brush stroke. I'm getting a watercolor look to my stroke. Various layers of color within that one color. That's the watercolor. Another one that's kind of fun, we've got a series of bristle brush borders, decorative vector packs. This grunge brush is actually pretty fun. Very bold ink splotch. I, I love the looks of these. We have a number of different grunge looks that we can pull in. And these are all brushes that we can add to our mix. One more I want to bring up just to kind of show a point. The hand-drawn brush tool. I'll click on that squiggle brush. And as I draw a line across, I have the squiggly line. I'll go ahead and close this for now. If I select this, what you're going to notice is that my path is actually a straight line. If you had used the squiggle brush and then wanted to do a fill thinking that the fill is going to fill that squiggle, what actually happens is the fill fills the path. That's not going to do what we want. So with whenever you use these type of brushes, you usually would not be using a fill color with those. I want to skip to the blob brush for a minute, but before we use the blob brush, I'm going to pull my paintbrush tool up one more time. I'm going to select the 15 round for this exercise. I want to create an object by kind of just painting around and filling this in and pretty much create a solid object with the paintbrush. So I'm going to just keep filling this in until I get all of this completely blacked in. And now I have this shape, blob shape, on my artboard. Let's go ahead and select the blob brush. Now with the blob brush, I have a circle out here, and I can change the adjustment of that by hitting the left or the right bracket keys. And that actually will work with just about any of the brush tools. Let's go ahead and try to recreate what we just did. At least come close, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to draw a blob out here, and I'm going to fill in with the blob brush until I get everything filled in. And now we've got two very similar designs. To show you the difference, when I hover over this, those are paths. When I hover over the blob brush, nothing happens. If I go up to view and I view the outline of this object, all I'm going to see are just the paths. And notice the one on the left is made up of a whole bunch of paths. The one on the right is pretty much just an outline path and the inside would be fill. In fact, when I go back and preview this again, this time I'm going to go ahead and select both items. And after selecting them, I'm going to choose a stroke of one. We're going to go to a basic shape. I'm going to choose a stroke that is black, and I'm going to choose a fill that is red. And I click off of this. This is what we wind up with. I don't know exactly what we have on the left, but that's not what I intended. That's not what I wanted to look at. 
The object on the right is more what I was looking for. I wanted a shape with a border around it. This is kind of an odd thing that would be very hard to clean up. If you need to create a shape and you want it filled in, you need to use the blob brush to do that. Okay, we're gonna move down and take a look at the pencil tool. Once again, this is just an introduction to all these tools. When I click on the pencil tool, notice there's a little triangle to the lower left, to the lower right of it. If I click, I have a pencil tool, a smooth tool, and a path eraser tool. I also have a tear off. I'm gonna go ahead and tear that off, drag it out here. Start with the pencil tool. Pencil will actually allow me to draw a basic path. The difference between the pencil and the brush is that if I draw a path that I don't necessarily like, it wasn't quite what I wanted, I can click back over it and redraw it, and it will redraw every time until I get the shape exactly the way I want that shape. The smooth tool will allow me to make small adjustments instead of completely redrawing if I run my smooth tool, notice that it's making just very minor adjustments and kind of smoothing out the shape of that line. Every time I go over it, it smooths it out just a little bit more. Before, where it was a little bit of a rough edges, now it's turning out to be quite smooth. And finally, my path eraser tool. If I try to click and cross over a path, nothing happens. But if I start at an anchor point and I start to erase over the path, it will erase anchor point to anchor point. It will also allow me to erase anchor points within the middle of that path. The path eraser tool will allow me to erase portions of that path. The last tool set that I want to show you is the eraser tool set. Uh, in order to show you this tool, I'm going to start by creating an object. I'm going to go to my ellipse tool that we learned the other day, and I'm going to draw a fairly large ellipse out here. I'm gonna select it. Let's give it a point value of about four. Let's do a purple stroke, and let's do a fill color orange. What we have out here is our eraser tool set. If I hover over that and click on it, I have an eraser, scissors, and knife tool. Let's go ahead and tear that one out as well. First of all, I'm on my eraser tool. The circle shows me how big of an eraser I'm using. I can make that eraser a little bit smaller if I choose. And if I click outside of this circle and drag through, it allows me to literally cut that in half and it will follow whatever curve I make with the eraser. It also creates new closed paths out of the objects that are left over. Those are now individual pieces. They are completely separate pieces than what I had before. With the eraser tool, I can also click within the center of an object to drag out and it will erase just that middle section. I can actually make any number of corrections that way as well and creating designs by just clicking and dragging into the object. The knife tool on the other hand will allow me to cut straight through an object. If I click outside the object and pull in and it now has created a cut right through that object and they are also separate objects. I can click and move those aside as well. So now my object has become separate objects. The last one that I want to look at is the scissor tool. The scissor tool is a little bit different to where what it's actually doing is it's cutting into the path or cutting into the anchor point. A scissor tool will do nothing if I click outside. In fact, I get an error message. But if I zoom in, let's zoom in on this object right here. And if I hover over that anchor point and click, notice it broke those in half. I can also click down here on the path and click and it's now literally cut through the path. If I go to my selection tool, I can click on this object and move it out of the way, and it is a separate piece than what I had before. But notice that it did not continue the path like the eraser and the knife did. The path is now broken. It only cuts through the path. Okay, so there you have it. These are the tools that we're playing with today. Have fun with those. I want you to kind of experiment with them. Go through a lot of the different brushes. The more you get familiar with what brushes you have at your disposal, the better you're going to be at identifying what brush is going to be the best tool for your project. Until next episode, this is Mr. New for East Career and Tech Academy.